Welcome to another episode of Ancient Horrors Unveiled. Today, we delve into the chilling tale of ancient torture that sends shivers down the spine even centuries later. History is replete with brutally imaginative torture and execution techniques. The list of cruelties includes crucifixion, where victims were left to die on the cross, the rack, where torturers would place the victim on a wooden frame to be slowly pulled apart, and hanging, drawing, and quartering, the official English punishment for high treason from 1351 to 1870, where men would be drawn by horse to their place of execution. Left hung until near death, and then emasculated and disemboweled before being decapitated and cut into quarters. The most intricately sadistic form of torture, however, originated with the Greek tyrant Phalaris, the brazen bull. Once upon a time in ancient Greece around 560 BCE, the seaside colony of Akragas, now Agrigento, in Sicily, was controlled by a powerful but cruel tyrant named Phalaris. According to the Athenian historian Thucydides, Akragas was founded in 580 BCE by Greek settlers from Gela, led by Aristonus and Pistolus. It was the last of the major Greek colonies in Sicily to be founded. Ten years after the founding of Akragas, funds were given to a man named Phalaris with the intention of building a great temple to Zeus. In Greek mythology, Akragas was said to be a son of Zeus and the Oceanid Asterope. Phalaris, the son of Leodamas of Rhodes, used the funds of the temple to buy himself an army of mercenaries who went on to seize the city and make him its tyrant. The term tyrant was originally defined as someone who took power by force from a previous governing body. Not all tyrants were cruel. However, Phalaris was one of the rulers who gave the word tyrant its current definition as an autocratic oppressive dictator. The first few years under Phalaris were pretty good. Under his rule, Acragas seems to have attained considerable prosperity. In the history of Sicily, Phalaris' importance lies in the fact that he was the first tyrant who, by extending his influence over a large part of the island, deterred the Phoenicians from taking hold of the whole island. In the history of Agrigento, he was responsible for the sudden power and glory of the city. The growth of a tyranny so soon after the foundation of a city is remarkable. The splendid layout of the city probably belongs to his time. He supplied the city with water, adorned it with fine buildings, and strengthened it with walls. He also improved trade with Carthage and organized athletic contests. In short, he changed the original settlement into a real city. On the northern coast of the island, the people of Himera elected him general with absolute power, in spite of the warnings of the poet Stesichorus. According to the Suda, Phalaris succeeded in making himself master of the whole of the island. In the historical tradition, Phalaris became the prototype of an evil dictator. He ruled a wealthy and lovely metropolis with an iron fist from 570 to 554 BCE. With more wealth and more power came more corruption. Phalaris went crazy with narcissism and paranoia. He was rumored to be a cannibal who devoured infant children. The story goes that, as time passed, he became more and more power-crazed and started to think of creative ways to punish those who transgressed against him. He wanted a way to make an example of criminals by creating the most horrific form of death possible. The metalworker Perillos of Athens had the perfect answer. The meeting between the two men gave birth to one of the evilest torture devices ever thought of. The Greek inventor, Perillos of Athens, was finally able to build the most terrifying torture device ever, the brazen bull. It is said that one day, Phalaris's court sculptor Perilaeus showed off his new creation to his master, a replica of a real-size bull in gleaming bronze. The device itself was simple, a hollow bronze bull with a door in its side. The condemned was placed inside and a fire was lit below, which heated the bronze and roasted the victim alive. The ingenious design then converted the smoke from the roasting human into clouds of incense. A further refinement was a system of pipes and stops in the bull's head, which turned the screams of agony into the sound, like the bellowing of an infuriated bull. 
The person inside the brazen bull would get slowly burnt and roasted to death over the course of few hours, as they would fail to find a place to run, and the entirety of the bull would be too hot to touch. As a result, the person would keep screaming until they died. The peculiar thing was, when the person inside would scream, the container would let out a loud and terrifying sound like a bull screaming, which could be heard for quite a long distance. This sound gave the device the name Brazen Bull. Stories allege after finishing construction on the execution device, Paralos said to Phalaris, his screams will come to you through the pipes as the tenderest, most pathetic, most melodious of bellow. When Phalaris learned of this scheme, he was filled with loathing of the man and is said to have thought, his words revolted me. I loathed the thought of such ingenious cruelty and resolved to punish the artificer in kind. Phalaris said to Perilos, if this is anything more than an empty boast, Perilos, if your art can really produce this effect, get inside yourself and pretend to roar, and we will see whether the pipes will make such music as you describe. Perilous consented, and when he was inside the bull, Phalaris closed the aperture and ordered a fire to be kindled. Phalaris cried, Receive the due reward of your wondrous art. Let the music master be the first to play. Perilous had believed he would receive a reward for his invention. Instead, Phalaris tricked him into getting in the bull. Upon hearing Perilous's shrieks, the content tyrant removed the craftsman from bull and took him away, half dead, half alive. After freeing him from the bull, Phalaris is then said to have taken Perilous to the top of a hill and thrown him off, killing him. Thus, the first victim of the brazen bull was its creator himself. While Perilous fell out of favor, the bull became his favorite toy and Phalaris threw anyone who displeased him inside. He even had the bones of his victims made into jewelry. Phalaris adopted the device and even put it to use as a novel method of sending offenders to a painful death. It was supposedly used to execute many other people over the years, and was supposedly popular among the Sicilian tyrants, who used it to eliminate anyone who posed a threat to their rule. This included political opponents, rebels, and even innocent bystanders who happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. It is most likely the cruelest form of punishment that humans have ever created. The agonizing death of being cooked alive was merciless, and some would remain alive for up to 10 minutes fully conscious while being roasted inside the bronze shell. The brazen bull was used as entertainment at feasts. When the fire burned, the bull came to life, snoring and bellowing, entertaining the guests as the heat cooked the poor individual inside. The bull of Phalaris was not only a means of physical torture, but also a method of psychological torment. The combination of the victim's suffering and the eerie sounds emitted by the bull made it a particularly gruesome and horrifying form of execution. It was intended not only to end a person's life, but also to instill fear and terror among the population, discouraging dissent and rebellion. Phalaris, once said to have visited the sacred site of Delphi to offer the bull to Greek god Pythian Apollo, a pious act that aims to clear himself from the charge of cruelty. The sculptor, Perilaios, mistakenly believed it would be a suitable gift for Phalaris, who is reputed to be a man who takes excessive pleasure in torturing. Yet, as Phalaris claims to the Delphic priests, this judgment is unfair. His decision to torture enemies was always made in the interest of his regimes, and therefore his state's security. The bronze sculpture therefore operates as a dual sign, as a symbol of his purported brutality and his assumed humanity. The story of the brazen bull is mainly known from the writings of ancient historians. Diodorus Siculus, a Greek historian from the first century BCE, is the earliest source who detailed the story of Phalaris and the brazen bull. His writings form the basis of our understanding of the bull, its creation, and the tragic end of its creator. Another source is Pindar, a Greek lyric poet, who briefly mentions Phalaris in one of his odes and refers to a copper bellowing bull. Lucian, a rhetorician and satirist from the second century CE, also mentions the bull and Phalaris's cruel reign in his writings. Despite these mentions, the authenticity of the bull remains a topic of debate among historians, with some arguing that the device may be more legend than reality, a gruesome tale embellished over centuries. After 16 years of rule, Phalaris was overthrown in a general rising headed by a man named Telemachus. 
Telemachus was the ancestor of Anacidamus and of Anacidamus's son, Theron. Telemachus later ordered Phalaris to be executed in the same bull he had used to torment others. In true poetic justice, a mob seized him and bundled him inside the brazen bull. He was roasted alive. The tales of the bull didn't end with Phalaris or Perilos. Stories tell us that the bull was taken by the Carthaginians when they sacked Agracus in 406 BCE, when the Carthaginian navigator Himilco took Agracus. The brazen bull was at Carthage when the Greek historian Polybius visited Africa in the 2nd century BCE. Aristotle mentions Phalaris's suffering without going into depth about it when he discusses immoral behavior. Diodorus claims to be the live witness of the bronze bull when it was located in Agrigento in the 1st century BCE. Executions continued to utilize the brazen bull well into the 5th century. The Romans have been claimed to have used this torture device to kill some Christians, notably St. Eustace, who, according to Christian tradition, was roasted in a brazen bull with his wife and children by Emperor Hadrian. The same happened to St. Antipas, Bishop of Pergamum during the persecutions of Emperor Domitian and the first martyr in Asia Minor, who was roasted to death in a brazen bull in 92 AD. The device is claimed to have still been in use two centuries later, when by some legends, another Christian, Pelagia of Tarsus, is said to have been burned in 287 AD by the Emperor Diocletian. It is said that the bull was eventually destroyed, although no archaeological evidence supports these claims. The concept of the brazen bull resurfaced during the Middle Ages and the early modern period in Europe. Some versions of the Iron Maiden, an alleged torture device consisting of an iron cabinet with a hinged front and spike-covered interior, reflect a similar principle as the bull. However, these devices, like the bull itself, exist on the blurry line between historical fact and folklore, and their use in actual torture or execution is a subject of ongoing debate. The Bull of Phalaris remains a symbol of the cruelty and tyranny of some ancient rulers. It has also left a lasting cultural impact and has been referenced in literature, art, and various forms of media as a symbol of torture and inhumanity. The Brazen Bull, despite its disputed historical authenticity, continues to serve as a grim reminder of the depths of human cruelty. Its existence, real or fictional, stands testament to the lengths to which systems of power and control can dehumanize individuals, using terror as a tool for maintaining authority. As we explore the intricate, often grim tapestry of human history, the story of the brazen bull underscores the essential need for humanity, compassion, and justice in our societies. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the depths of history. Until next time, remember to stay curious and never stop exploring the mysteries of our world.